What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Here we are with another reaction video guys. In this one we have India and other countries issue advisories over UK riots with Pocky Sharma. Every time I go on YouTube, type up UK, type up British, type up Britain, I'm seeing these riots just every single day, at least for the past week, ever since the Southport stabbing. And it's just it's absolutely insane to me what's going on. It's terrifying. Um, I'm still looking into more content, uh, but it's it, it's crazy over there. So I'm definitely intrigued to hear what Pocky Sharma has to say. Before we do dive in, however, if you would like to support this channel by becoming a member, all you got to do is click that join button down below. Just, just go, go down, hit join, and you'll receive exclusive benefits that I know you guys will enjoy. Let's dive right in. <clears throat> Now let's turn our attention to the UK, where the riots showed no sign of dying down. They began in the seaside town of Southport last week, after the Jeez. brutal stabbing there left three young children dead. That's legit heartbreaking. I, I hate, I don't hate many things, but I hate evil. I hate evil. And it, it just, it, it affects me and it bothers me so much, like, that people can do stuff like this in the world. It, it just, it, it really takes a toll on me that people can do such evil in the world. I, I can't take it. it, it uh, we're going to continue the video because I could talk about it forever. It truly just, it hurts. After the brutal stabbing there, left three young children dead. The children were murdered by a British national, a 17-year-old of Rwandan heritage, who was born in Wales. Mm. But this attack sparked nationwide anti-Muslim riots. The police wow. say that the attacker had no known links to Islam. But the British rioters mm. do not believe that. They have chosen to believe the rumours that they heard online about the attacker being a Muslim migrant. And that is wow. why the riots began. The rioters have been targeting mosques and hotels being used to house wow. asylum seekers. Wow. Both these groups are terrified. They're afraid of being attacked. The Muslim communities are terrorized. Oh if, I, if I'm going to use the word, they are terrorized. They fear, um, they fear for their safety. Um, they fear that they cannot go out. Uh, they fear um, that anything could happen. Like we saw that taxi drivers have been attacked. So people can, cannot really go and do their day-to-day -day job realistically because uber drivers have been attacked taxi drivers attacked women are threatened uh, mosques vandalized and this is becoming the kind of in, in the last few days the activity that is happening on a daily basis across different regions i feel yeah. very stressed and very, it's, it's very distressing uh, moment in our life we've never seen this kind of uh, far-right group uh, active against uh, anti anti-immigrant so we're yeah it's i i would be absolutely terrified right um and so I, I didn't even know the fact that it wasn't even a Muslim, like he wasn't even Muslim yet all this. And it was just a, a, the spark that started the absolute fire. Um, and I, even if he was, I just I can't stand when you attack an entire group of people because of what one person that claims to be a part of that group might have did. When you attack an entire race of people, when you attack an entire religious group, when you attack an entire nation of people because of what a couple of people in that group did. It's just not right. Now, I don't know what's going on in the UK and what what kind of things are happening daily because for but but that Southport stabbing was definitely gonna cause absolute an absolute outbreak. Definitely gonna cause riots. And for them to lie, whoever lied, I don't know, I guess it was the far right, whoever lied and said this guy was Muslim, and again, I don't know, I haven't done my research, I'm going off what she said, and she said he had no affiliation uh, with the, with uh, being a Muslim, and he was born in Wales, he was a British citizen, born and raised, and so um, for somebody to lie like that and to start all this, um, it's just... It is truly hurtful as a human being, seeing any group of human beings being attacked, seeing um, it. I can't, I can't take evil, dog. 
where we are living fear and uh, anxiety. This could be anything could happen to us and, and we are living fear. I can't imagine it. The British police force has been trying to stop the rioters, but they don't seem to have the numbers. And now they're also dealing with counter protesters. These were the scenes from Plymouth yesterday. It's a city in southwest England. The two groups faced off against each other. There were the wow. anti-Muslim, anti-immigrant rioters on one side and the counter protesters on the other. You can hear them chanting slogans of unity. On immigration. One race equals human race. Thanks. It's a valiant effort, but it hasn't stopped the violence in Britain. While this was going on in Plymouth, here's what was happening in Belfast, in Northern Ireland. Rioters set buildings and various objects on fire using My petrol bombs. Days. They were also throwing these bombs and other objects at the police. It's a massive failure of law and order. Britain's Prime Minister Keir Starmer is scrambling to come up with a solution. First is we will have a standing army of specialist officers, public uh, you know, duty officers, uh, so that we'll have enough officers to deal with this where we need them. We'll ramp up criminal justice. There have already been hundreds of arrests. Some have appeared in court this morning. I've wow. asked for early consideration of the earliest naming and identification of those involved in the process who will feel the full force of the law. And thirdly, I've been absolutely clear that the criminal law applies online as well as offline, and I'm assured oh, that wow. that's the approach that is being taken. Stop. Oh, wow. it's just, he said there's going to be enough officers, but it's hard because it seems like there's more and more of these riots every day, and they're spreading to more and more cities, they're spreading to smaller cities, and it's like, how do you have enough police force to stop everybody, like, like everyone? How do you spread a police force? I know every, well here, I guess I'll say every city has their own police force, so, uh, because we have states and all that, I'm not sure how it's broken down in the UK, uh, I know they got cities, and but they don't have states, they, I don't think, I could be wrong, but, um, uh, it, it, it's just a lot. It's a ton to deal with. Tamo plans to set up a standing army of specialist officers. British courts will sit for all 24 hours of the day. They will work around the clock to wow. sentence the rioters. About 400 people have been arrested so far. They could My face up to 10 years day. in prison. Jail capacity in the UK has been increased to make room for all the rioters and for the people instigating the riots online. Wow. One man has already been charged for hateful Facebook posts. And that is what Starmer meant when he said that criminal law applies both online and offline. The British Prime Minister is trying to put an end to the violence. He's clearly struggling though. And amid all of this, he's found himself in a war of words with Elon Musk, the billionaire owner of social media platform X, formerly known as Twitter. It started with this. Musk replied to a post about the riot saying, civil war is inevitable. That's what he said. Obviously, Keir Starmer did not take kindly to this. The British government called Musk, and I'm quoting, deeply irresponsible and deplorable. Mm -hmm. But that has not stopped Musk. He has called the British police response one-sided. He has criticized the British Prime Minister's action plan, and he opposes Starmer's crackdown on hate speech online. Wow. Basically, Elon Musk has become a thorn in Keir Starmer's side. Dang, I noticed that, yeah. Elon Musk, like, really, he really is, like, gonna say whatever he wants. Um, yeah, this is crazy. Uh, I don't know if it's, I don't know the full situation going on in the UK. I know about the Southport stabbing incident. I don't know about all the things that may, all the tension that may have led up to this starting the absolute outrage that's going on in the UK. I, I don't know, but... Um, I just, Elon, he, you got freedom of speech, but it kind of is just irresponsible, I do feel like, for him to be saying a lot of this stuff, and I, but I don't know if it's one side, I don't know all the details over in the UK, but it does kind of seem irresponsible to be saying all this. Y'all let me know how y'all feel in the comment section.
Of course, none of this helps the situation, which remains tense. That is why several countries have issued advisories to their citizens. Australia is one of them. It says there's a threat of terrorism in the UK. Malaysia is another. It has warned its citizens to stay away from protests and remain vigilant. Nigeria, too, has issued a warning. It has asked people from ah, the Nigerian community dang. to avoid large gatherings. And rounding off the list of concerned former colonies is India. Indians visiting the UK have been asked to exercise due caution. These warnings and advisories are the need of the hour because the British rioters are clearly targeting people on the basis of race and religion. Jesus Christ. What's to stop them from attacking tourists next? See, that's Britain's that's racist insane. dealing is truly out of the bottle and it yes. is spreading fires and hatred in all yes. corners of the country. Even if Keir Starmer manages to quell the violence, how will he tackle the ingrained racism in British society? Mm. I think she brings up uh, very great points. Uh, it's just everything's out the bag. And yeah, it gets to a point where these riots and these groups just start attacking people that they deem as Muslim or that they deem as an immigrant. Um, and so it's just a scary place to be right now, it seems. It seems to me like a very scary place to be. I, I hate that it is. I truly, truly hate that it is. It seems like that's becoming more so the world that we're living in, not just in the UK, but it just seems like, I don't know, the world as a whole is, is, is getting frustrated. Humanity is just getting frustrating. And I know humanity's done evil deeds for so long, but I guess you just got to look and say there are many people out here that write, that are, that are honorable, that spread love, that spread positivity. And, um... You just got to try to focus on that in a world that's full of so much negativity. That's all we have. Let me know what you guys think about these riots, what you guys think is the reasoning, and, and how you think this will play out. Do you agree with Elon that this could turn into a civil war? Or do you think that Elon is just being deeply irresponsible and kind of stoking the fires? Uh, that's all we have. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe, give a video a like. Also, check out this next video. It's your boy, Daniel. Out.